By the end of this session, you'll know the conditions for the equilibrium of an object and you'll be able to use the principle of moments to calculate unknown forces. Now, if we have a look at this toy, then if I hang masses on the edge, it tips over. If I balance up the mass, it evens out. And if I add, wherever I add masses, I need to balance it out for the bar to be horizontal. What we say is that when the bar is horizontal, this toy is in equilibrium. There are no moments and there are no forces or no resultant forces. If I take that off, then all of a sudden it's unbalanced again. And if I want to even it up, I have to make sure that the total moments are balanced. So, for an object to be in equilibrium, there has to be no net force acting in any direction and no moments acting in any direction, either clockwise or anti-clockwise. Let's have a look at that example of a ruler resting on the edge of a table. At the moment, the ruler is balanced. The reaction force is equal but opposite to the force of the weight acting down, and the ruler doesn't go anywhere. If I put an apple on the edge of the ruler, then the edge of the table begins to act as a pivot and we have turning forces, we have moments. And the moment is due to the weight of the apple and the distance between the apple and the pivot. And what happens is that the apple will fall off and we'll have a very bruised apple. So, the principle of moments says that for an object in equilibrium, the sum of the clockwise moments is equal to the sum of the anticlockwise moments around any point. So we can take any point of an object in equilibrium, work out the moments, and they should be equal. And that gives you an example just like this. So the total anticlockwise moments are equal to the total clockwise moments. Have a look at this question. Is the plank in equilibrium? How would we work that out? <laughs> 